Hey, let's give him another hand now. It make you want to join the choir, don't it? Uh-oh, almost, uh-oh. Come on. Uh-uh. Come on. All right. All right, brothers and sisters, happy Sabbath to you. Yeah, welcome home here to the Israel God, Jackson, Mississippi. And before we get started today, brothers and sisters, we're going to have to read another law. We're going to start off uh, Exodus 20, 1 through 17. Brother, go ahead. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord would not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day, to keep it holy. Six days shall thy labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God give thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. All right, brothers and sisters, we're going to go to Ecclesiastes chapter 12. We're going to read 13 through 14. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. All right, we're going to go to Revelation 22, and we're going to read 14 through 15. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. All right, brother, thank you for reading the law. And once again, brothers and sisters, I want to say happy Sabbath to you. It's an honor and a blessing to stand before you on the Lord's Sabbath day. Brother and sisters, the title of this lesson that the Lord put on my heart to do this week is something I've been dealing with, you know, evangelizing. So I thought it would be an opportunity uh, to deal with life, death, and the resurrection. Life, death, and the resurrection. Because everything, brothers and sisters, begins with life. And as we go through this lesson, then death was put on the table because we're going to be begin to see and understand death came in, brothers and sisters, because of sin. And death is just an interruption of the creation. And we're going to look at the resurrection because a lot of people still think in the secular world that you die, you go, go right off into the third heaven. But we're going to look through this lesson, brothers and sisters. We're going to take it from the beginning and walk it down to death because we know death, brothers and sisters, is appointed to man once. And we're going to look at the resurrection. We're going to start this lesson off in Genesis 2. Genesis 2. And we're going to start in verse 7. We're going to deal with the part of life now. 
Genesis 2 and verse 7. Brother, when you get it, go ahead. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. That's right. Man was made from the dust of the ground because, brother, so we all know that because we all got a ring around the collar on it. So I let you know that's confirmation right there that you made out of dirt. But see here the Lord said he breathed in the nostrils the breath of life and then it said man became a living soul before he breathed into the nostrils man was a dead soul. So now let's look here let's skip down to verse 18. Go ahead. And the Lord God said it is not good that man should be alone. Go ahead. I will make him a help meet for him. That's right. Now let's skip down to 21 because the Lord said it ain't good for man to be alone. He made him a help meet. Now let's pick up verse 21 here and see how the Lord dealt with this here help meet here. Let's go here. Verse 21. Go ahead. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam and he slept. Go ahead. And he took one of his ribs and close up the flesh instead thereof. That's right. When you look at this, brothers and sisters, it's showing you that the Lord didn't go back in the ground for the woman, did it? It took the rib from man. Go ahead. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman go ahead. And, and brought her unto the man. That's right. Go ahead. 23. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. That's right. That's something really significant, brothers and sisters, to look at because the Lord didn't go back to the ground for woman. He went to the man's rib. So when you look at marriage, it's two people, but the Lord tell you to what? To become one. Because that woman is bone of my bones and what? Flesh of my flesh. Now let's skip down here. No, no, there was 23, wasn't there? That's right. I want to just pick up 24 and read that because, yeah, read 24. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. That's right. They shall become one flesh. Now, let's move a little further here because we're still dealing with life here because now you see when God made man that he said that it wasn't good for man to be alone that he created a woman from him, from man, from his rib. Now, let's go to Job 14. Let's go to Job 14. And let's pick this up here. And we're going to pick up one through two here, Job 14 here. Because anybody tell you, now you'll be able to explain them about soul because even though that's another lesson, now you understand what the soul is. It's the whole body. There's not nothing flying about you. What it is, it's the breath that allowed that soul to have life. But we're going to get into that as we go, go through this lesson here. Now let's pick up Job 14 and look at verse 1 here. Go ahead, what does it say? Man that is born of a woman is of few days. Of a few days, go ahead. And full of trouble. And full of trouble. Brother, so you look at what's going on in the world now. You can understand this scripture, can't you? All the chaos, all the things that's going on in the world today for a child to be born, it's going to be full of trouble. Now look at verse 2, what does it say? He cometh forth like a flower and is cut down. He flees also as a shadow and continues not. That's right, brother. So when we look at this here, we only have a short time here. And the Lord described us that he coming forth like a flower and is cut down and flee it also as a shadow. So as we look at this here, we're going to go look here because we looked at Adam being formed from the dust of the ground. Woman was taken from man's rib and created. Because the Lord tells us that it's not, it's not good for a man to be alone. So he made man a help me, not a slave, a help me. 
to help. So that's, that's responsibility right there, brothers and sisters. Now, let's look here at the book of the generation of Adam. We're going to go to, back to Genesis and, then, and look at Genesis 5. Genesis 5. And we're going to pick up 1 through 2. Go ahead, brother. This is the book of the generations of Adam. Go ahead. In the day that God created man, in the likeness of God made he him. That's right. In the likeness of God made he him. That's something to look at there, brother. Some spirit that you was making that image. Go ahead. Look at verse 2. What does it say? Male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam in the day when they were created. All right, skip down to verse 5. What does it say? And all the days that Adam lived were 930 years, and he died. And he died. Now we're looking at, brothers and sisters, now you're looking at, now we're getting into the death part, the looking at how you got the creation. Lord created man, Adam and Eve. Now you looked at Adam lived 930 years, and what? And he died. Now skip down to verse 32. Let's look at verse 32. I want to bring Noah in here. Go ahead. And Noah was 500 years old, and Noah begat Shem, Ham, and Japheth. So now we're seeing, brother, so when you look at the generation, how we know over the flood, by the faith and favor that Noah found with his sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, life began with those three sons over the flood. But he, you see that it was in the generation of what? Adam. That's where it began. Now, let's go a little further and look at this here because we're seeing here how the Lord allowed them to live a long time. Adam, 930 years. Noah was 500. Now, let's go to Genesis 6. We're right there, Genesis 6. And let's pick up verse 3 here. Verse 3, what does it say? And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man. That's right. Go ahead. For that he is flesh. That he is flesh. That my spirit shall not always strive with man. We know that word of God ain't always strive with man. You see in that today, it ain't striving with man today. But go ahead. What does it say? Yet his days shall be in 120 years. So just because of that, by the spirit, the word is not striving with man. The Lord took away what? Longevity of life. Adam, 930 years. Noah was 500. But due to that, brothers and sisters, Lord cut what? Lifespan down to what? 120 then. Now, now let's go look at Psalms 90. Let's look at Psalms 90. Because all this, when you look at it, brothers and sisters, is all coming down to obedience. Psalms 90. Psalms 90. And we're going to pick up verse 10. And look at how the Lord cut it down again. Let's look at uh, Psalms 90, verse 10. I hear a few pages. Let's go. Verse 10. What it say, bro? The days of our years are three scores, years, and ten. Ten, not three scores, that's twenty. Times three, go ahead. And if and if by reason of strength they be four score years, yet is their strength labor and sorrow, for it's soon cut off and we fly away. That's right. He cut it down to what? Seventy. And ten plus ten. That's seventy. But then he said, by reason of strength, they be what? Four score years. See how he cut that down from living up to almost a thousand years? Then he cut it down to 120. Then he said, by strength, you can get close to 80. But all that comes, brother sister, from what? That his spirit is not striving with man. His words, brothers and sisters. Because just think if we had to live another three or four hundred years in the wickedness that we're seeing now. Even though we know that there's nothing new. Under the sun, but things that we seeing now, brothers and sisters, is being magnified, ain't it? Right in front of us, ain't it? 
So when you look at this here, these are things we got to continue to look at how from disobedience, how the Lord took longevity life, you know, longevity from us and brought it all the way down to 70. And if, then he said, by the reason of strength, they be what? Four scores. Get that. So we know anything over that, brother, so we know it's by the hand of God, ain't it? Mm -hmm. Now, now let's go to Hebrews 9. Let's go to Hebrews 9. Because even when you look at 70 and you look at what's going on now, a lot of us, brothers, especially Israel, young men, and now young women, man, we'd be blessed to even get to 30. In the way they kill it now, you probably can get that down to about 20 or 25. Hebrews 9, and let's look at verse 27. Hebrews 9 and verse 27. Listen to this, because we're dealing with life. God saved foreign man from the dust of the ground. He went in man, took his rib to make woman. And he telling us, hey, for us, we come like a flower. We cut down. And there's a child born, he say, full of trouble. Now look at this here so we can understand here because we're going to begin to look at why this happening here. Let's look at Hebrews 9. In verse 27, what does it say? And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. And as it is appointed to men once to die, but after this, is judgment. Now let's look at how this death came about. Because when you look at the creation, when the Lord created the brothers and sisters, it wasn't for no one to die. It was for everyone to live then. Now let's go to Romans Five. Let's go to Romans 5. Because, see, now you begin to see things on the spiritual side of when you see death and why it's there. Romans 5, and we're going to look at verse 12. Romans 5. And we're going to look at verse 12 here. Go ahead, brother. What does it say? Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world. Wherefore, by one man sin entered into the world. Go ahead. And death by sin. Go ahead. And so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. That's right, brother and sister. Why death is on the table now? Because of sin. Brother and sister, why? Life inspects it was cut down. Disobedience. Lord, tell us that. That his spirit would not strive with man forever. So he's telling you now, brother, so, so when you begin to look at death, you can understand now it's because of sin. And when you look at because of sin, now we know, brother, so it's the transgression of the law. Because when you look at death now, it never was intended for us to die, brothers and sisters. So when you look at death now, it's just an interruption in the creation. Now, let's look at Romans 6 and 23. Romans 6 and 23. Because we just looked at by one man sin entered into the world. Let's look at Romans 6 and 23 because we know that that person was Adam there. Let's go look at 6 and 23. What does it say? For the wages of sin is death. For the wages of sin is what? Death. Death. Go ahead. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's right, brother and sister. Lord always giving us hope, ain't it? For the wages of sin is death. Everything that's going on now, brother and sister, in this world is contrary to the word of God. Uh, word of God is because of sin. That's why we got death on the table now, brothers and sisters. Now, let's look at this here because we got to understand that, you know, that sin came in because of Adam, because of what? Disobedience. The Lord cut our long of life down because of what? 
It's obedience. Now let's go look at 1 John 3 and 4 because we got to understand about this sin here because we want the biblical definition for it. Let's go to 1 John, 1 John 3 and 4 because now you can understand, brother and sister, why death is on the table. 1 John 3 and 4, go ahead. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. That's right, brother. So that was, was beginning to bring in death here. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is what? The transgression of the law. Everything, brother and sister, lies on the commandments of God. So when we begin to break the commandments, brothers and sisters, then we begin to see behavior changes, all type of lasciviousness in the world, all these type of things, brothers and sisters, it all stems around sin. Now, as the Lord tells us here in Hebrews 9, he says, appointed to man once to die, let's look at Ecclesiastes 8. Because now we're beginning to see here sin. How that death got on the table. Let's go to Ecclesiastes 8. Because we got to understand one thing, brothers and sisters, when it's dealing with life and death. Ecclesiastes 8. And we're going to pick up, we're going to start in verse 5. Because what we finna read now, brothers and sisters, right off the bat, listen to this here. Verse 5. Bro, what it say? Whoso keep the commandments shall feel no evil thing, and the wise man's heart discerneth both time and judgment. That's right. Whosoever keep the what? Commandment. The commandment. Just think, brothers and sisters, when you look at if everyone was keeping the commandments of God or the law, Will we have all this transgression out there today? Will we have all this lust, all this evil and wickedness? It all comes down to, brother and sister, to not keeping the commandments of God. It's simple. He said right here, whoso keep, keep it, the commandments shall feel no evil thing. Because, brother and sister, when you're grounded in that word and you begin to see things spiritually, you can understand the thing that's going around you. You're not getting afraid like everybody else, getting worried, because you know it's the hand of God. That's understanding, ain't it? Well, you know, we're getting knowledge, brother and sister. You got to get what? Understanding. You understanding all these things that's going on. You're not being afraid. You're still praying. You're still watching, because you know all this evil was going on was by the hand of God. Everything that goes on, brothers and sisters, diseases, sickness, death, is by the hand of God. But it comes back because of the disobedience of mankind. Now, let's look at verse 6. What does it say? Because to every purpose there is a time and judgment. Therefore, the misery of man is great upon him. That's right, because a lot of people, brothers and sisters, you think every day, I'm going to die today. Something bad going to happen to me today. All these things, brothers and sisters, when you see the way the world going, you're always thinking about that day or the next day. When is my time? You know, we look at, brothers and sisters, the Lord giving us, he gave us a time frame, but a lot of us cut short because of what? Sin, but it's because of your behavior. Now, go ahead, finish that. Verse 7, what does it say? For he knoweth not that which shall be, but who can tell him when it shall be? Nobody, brothers and sisters, because this one thing we got to remember here, verse 8, what it say? There is no man that hath power over the spirit to retain the spirit, neither hath he power in the day of death, and there is no discharge in that war, neither shall wickedness deliver those that are given to it. That's right, brothers and sisters, don't know, can none of us control our spirit, and that spirit is the breath of life. If the Lord wants you to die or it's your appointed time, you're going to die. That's something we got to understand about death, brothers and sisters. 
because a man can be shot ten times and live, and one man can get hit one time and die. Some diseases take people out. Some people survive. But who have the overall say in that, brothers and sisters? God has that. We got to remember that, brother. So that when faith come in, when it's your time and it's predestined, brother, so it's going to happen. What we have to do, because we read about there is time in judgment, we got to make sure we bless to be in the truth, to walk that truth every day. That's what we got to look at, brother and sister, because we don't know our time in judgment. Because if it falls upon you, brother and sister, you got to be prepared. Because none of us, brother and sister, guarantee to see each other next Sabbath, ain't it? No. So what we have to do is make sure that if we're fortunate to be in the truth, brother and sister, to walk that truth daily. Every day he give you that breath of life which begins life. Walk in the word of God until it's taken. Now, did we finish? Yeah, verse 8. We finished, finished that then. Yes, we did. So, now go right over to Ecclesiastes 9. And look at verse 2. Go ahead, brother. When you get there, go ahead. Please ask now. We're going to start in verse 2. Go ahead. All things come alike to all. There is one event to the righteous and to the wicked, and to the good and to the clean. Listen to this real close, brother and sister, so we don't get our walk, our knowledge, our understanding twisted. Start from the beginning again. Verse 2, what does it say? All things come alike to all. There is one event to the righteous and to the wicked to the good and to the clean, and to the unclean, to him that sacrifices, and to him that sacrifices not. As, it, the, as, it, the, as is the good, so is the sinner. He that sweareth, and he that fears an oath. Go ahead. What does it say? Verse 3. This is an evil among all things that are done under the sun. Remember that, brother, says that this is an evil among all things that are done under the sun. Go ahead. That there is one event unto all, Yea, also the heart of, of the sons of men is full of evil, and madness is in their heart while they live. And after that, they go to the dead. They go to the dead. Go ahead. For to him that is joined to all the living, there is hope. For a living dog is better than a dead lion. Ain't that something, brother and sister? Because when you look at that, brother and sister, with all the evil you're doing, and when the Lord tell you, for him that is joined to all the living, there is hope, for a living dog is better than a dead lion. Because we know the lion is the king of the jungle, ain't it? But he ain't no king dead, is he? This is the hope, brothers and sisters, that breath of life. When the Lord begins life with that breath of life, that he had breathed in the nostrils, and man became a living soul, and when you get that, brother and sister, the Lord grant that to grant that to you daily, that's hope. Because you can repent, you can ask for forgiveness, you can make amends, you can work on anything, brother and sister, that contrary to the word of God. But if you offended someone and you die or they die, how can you make it right with that person? See, these are the spiritual things, brothers and sisters, we got to look at the value of having that breath of life. Are you going to, the Lord bless you with this breath of life to keep living in wickedness? No, no, brothers and sisters, the Lord telling you this. Pick up verse 5, what does it say? For the living know that they shall die. So you know that, but go ahead. But the dead know not anything. Know anything, go ahead. Neither have they any more reward. For the memory of them is forgotten. That's right, it's forgotten, but you still can think and memorize, can't you? Look at verse 6, what it say? Also their love and their hatred and their envy is now perished. It's gone once you're dead, brother and sister. Go ahead. And now neither have they any more a portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. That's right, nothing. Once you're dead, brother and sister, the Lord take that breath away, that's it. But long as you live in brothers and sisters, you have an opportunity 
to continue to serve the Lord. Because a lot of times, Brother Sue, we take the breath of life for granted. And we got to think as godly men and women, what will I do with the breath of life today? Lord granted it to you. You ain't work up on your own. You know? But a lot of us think, brother and sister, we just, hey, I ain't woke myself up. You know? But brother and sister, all things, we just read the scripture that said no man can control the spirit, can he? Or retain it. Now, let's look at because the Lord tell us death is an evil among us. Now let's go back to Genesis and let's look at uh, Genesis 3. Because we never know, brothers and sisters, our time and judgment. Let's go to Genesis 3. Genesis 3. And let's look at 17, Genesis 3 and 17. Because this is something we got to be begin to understand, brothers and sisters, because of with death. Lord give us life, and then it's appointed to man to die once. Let's look at this here, Genesis 3 and 17, what it say? And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and has eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying. So whose voice did he hear? His wife. He ain't listened to the Lord, did he? Right. That's why, brothers and sisters, I tell all men as a servant of God, are you going to be Adam or are you going to be Job? Right. Just food for thought. Because Job told his wife, you sound like a foolish woman, ain't he? Brothers and sisters, we got to listen to the Lord. Go ahead. What did it say? Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake, and sorrow shall thou eat all the days of thy life. Go ahead. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. Go ahead, verse 19. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground. For out of it was thou taken, for dust thou art, unto dust shalt thou return. That's right, brother, so when you read that, do you see anything about ashes? Just want you to catch that. In the sweat of thy face shall thy eat bread till thou return into the ground. Brothers and sisters, when, the, when, when Adam did what he did, he put death on the table, and man had to begin to work then. Ain't we working now? Ain't we sweating? And you're going to do that until what? Until thou what? Return into the ground. Not going to the third heaven, but return into the ground. Why is that? Because I tell people, brothers and sisters, until you go in the ground, that's when you make your homecoming because you're going back where you came from. Now, did we finish that? We did. Because this is what we got to look at. Let's go to John 3 because a lot of times, brothers and sisters, we got to clear up the matter when you die. Because most people want to say, oh, man, you die. You go ahead on to heaven. But let's look at John 3 here. Because you go back to the ground, brother and sister. That's where you at. Anyone that's dead, brother and sister, is still in the ground. Let's look at John 3. And let's look at 13. These are some key points here, brother. So what we're finna read here can be a marker for you. Nail in the wall. John 3 and 13, what does it say? And no man hath ascended up to heaven. And no man has did what? Ascended up to heaven. That's right. Go ahead. But he that came down from heaven. And who is that? Even the Son of Man which is in heaven. That's right. That was Jesus that come down. And no man has ascended up to heaven. Sin means go up. But he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. So no man has been there, brothers and sisters, but the one that came down. Now let's go to 1 Timothy 6. 
because that's going to, because we know Jesus come from the third heaven. Let's look at 1 Timothy. There's some things, brothers and sisters, sisters, that we just got to clear up. 1 Timothy 6. And look at 16. 1 Timothy 6 and 16. Because we know that Jesus sitting on the right hand of the Father was in the third heaven. Now let's look at this when no man has ascended to heaven but the one who come down. To let you know, brother, so that everybody that didn't die is still in the ground. Look at verse 16. 1 Timothy 6 and 16, what does it say? Who only hath immortality, dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, whom no man hath seen nor man, can see. That's right. Man, I haven't even seen it, ain't it? All you're seeing is the second heaven. Go ahead. Nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. That's right, brother and sister. So for you to get there, you're not, you're not even able to see it. Who only have immortality? We know Jesus did. Dwelling in the light which what? No man can approach unto. Because he showed that to you, brothers and sisters, in the creation. That's why when, when the water is there from the third heaven that you can't see. That's why the Lord, the first light was made, couldn't what? Shine through that water, that firmament. So that's why the Lord had to put in the stars, sun, and the moon to shine well on earth because that light in the third heaven couldn't shine through. So brothers and sisters, how you going to get somewhere? You can't even see it. The scripture is telling you that. So we understand, them, brothers and sisters, that when death come upon you, brothers and sisters, you making your homecoming in that ground. Now, let, now let's move a little further. Let's go to Acts 2. Acts 2. Because most people you talk to, boy, they said they die, said they. Whoever it is is what? On the arm of Jesus now. <laughs> they up there looking down and stuff. But we just read all that stuff, brother. So you ain't got no more memory, no nothing. You know? Because these are things, brother and sister, as you look at this today, you can rebuke that, that foolish talk. But a lot of them just talking out of tradition. You know? It ain't read nowhere that you're going to be an angel. But those are things that are what? Being taught. Yeah, you know, all those type of things. My family member, whoever it is, looking down upon me now. But see, they only doing what they've been taught, brother and sister. That's why it's our job to rebuke that and, and to correct that, brother and sister. Let's look at Acts 2 and look at verse uh, 29. What does it say? Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David. That's right. We know Dave, King David here. Go ahead. That he is both dead and buried, and his sepulcher is with us unto this day. The sepulcher, he's buried, he's dead and buried, and his sepulcher is with us until when? This day. This day. Go ahead, verse 30. Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with, his, with an oath to him that of his fruit of his loin, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. That's right, to sit on David's throne. This is all beginning to look at brother and sister to understand that resurrection. Because the Lord is, through all this brother and sister, the Lord is putting that creation back together. goes all the way. When you look at the feast days, brothers and sisters, it's all pictured Jesus and then the Father. Because he gonna, as we read through, we're going to understand that he's putting this all back in order, brothers and sisters. Because death was an interruption in the creation. No man was intended to die. But as sin entered in, it brought in what? Death. Now, we read that on day, where we at, verse 30? 31. 
31. Listen, 31. What does it say? He seeing this before, spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. That's right, brother. So when Jesus died, say he seeing this before, spoke of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul, that's a whole body. And then we picked it up in Genesis 2 and 7. That's the soul, brother. The whole body was what not left in hell. No the word of hell, brother, so the grave. And neither his flesh did see what? Corruption. Corruption. It didn't start deteriorating or anything, brothers and sisters. Go ahead, 32, what it say? This Jesus has God raised up, where, whereof we are all witnesses. Go ahead. Therefore being by the right hand being therefore being by the right hand of God exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost. He has shed forth this, which ye now see and hear. Hear. That's right. Look at verse 34. What does it say? For David is not ascended into the heavens. That's right. He put a, a plural on there. Earth, second heaven, and the third heaven. For David is not ascended. That means you got to get off the earth or the ground, brothers and sisters, to get into another heaven. The next one with the birds and stuff at is, is what? The second heaven. Then the one we read that you cannot see. It's the third heaven. That's where Jesus is sitting on the right hand of the Father. See, the heaven David is at is the one in the ground here on earth. Go ahead, pick that up again at the beginning. For David. For David is not ascended into the heaven. He ain't ascended nowhere, brother. So he's still, the body's still here. Go ahead. But he said himself, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit down on my right hand until I make thy foes thy footstool. Footstool. See, brothers and sisters, they're just putting this in order to let people understand that, hey, when you look at death, that's not the end. But see, you got to have that spiritual understanding because I always go back to Abraham when he sacrificed Isaac, that he had to understand the resurrection because what he did, he was just doing what? Obeying what God told him to do. Because how many of you, brother and sister, can just say, when the Lord come, you said, sacrifice your child. He didn't hesitate. So the angel came down and said, told him, don't do it. He said, now nah, I know. It's all about obedience, brother and sister. Why not obey? Because the Lord gives life and take it, ain't it? Even if you would have sacrificed and killed your child, the Lord can what? Raise it back up. It's all about obedience, brothers and sisters. We saw that at the beginning, dealing with life, dealing with death. That th through disobedience, our life span has what? Been taken down. We struggling, brothers and sisters, to get to 70 and 80. All disobedience, brothers and sisters, the things that we have done. Just think, brothers and sisters, that we hurting and feeling bad now at 40, 50, and 60. Just think, if we had to live hurting like this, we had to live to 200. We'll be crawling, won't it? <laughs> See, a lot of things, brothers and sisters, disobedience, putting a lot of unclean food in us, breaking our body down. Everything goes to obedience or disobedience, brothers and sisters. Simple. Now, that was the end of 34, one, 35. Now, let's go here and look at 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15. First Corinthians 15, we're going to pick up verse 12. Because now, when you begin to look at this, when the Lord have given us life. We knew the interruption come in because of sin. Death is on the table. Now the Lord is looking at showing us, brothers and sisters, about the resurrection. But see, in the resurrection, it's one thing, brothers and sisters, we got to do. We got to have faith, don't we? Everybody don't believe in the resurrection. So that is faith. Let's pick up 1 Corinthians 15 and look at verse 12, what does it say? Now if Christ be preached 
that he rose from the dead. Because that is being preached. Go ahead. How say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? Go ahead. But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? Not, go ahead, 14. And, and if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. That's right, because don't you believe Jesus died and he was resurrected? Do you believe that? I do. Do you have faith in that? You wasn't there to see it. Did you see it? But you believe it, don't you? Mm -hmm. That's faith. You got to have faith, brothers and sisters, in the resurrection. Go ahead. 15. 15, go ahead. Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised, up, raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. Go ahead. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised? That's right. Go ahead. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. Ye are yet in your sins. That's right. That means your faith that you don't believe. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is what? Vain. In vain. Because you're preaching something that ain't happening. But you believe that it happened, and you believe it without what? Seeing it. That's faith, brothers and sisters. Look at verse 18. What does it say? then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. That's right. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. That means for nothing, ain't it? If you ain't believing in the resurrection, that means everybody going to be in the ground what? forever, ain't it? But the Lord is preaching and showing us about the resurrection to understand, brothers and sisters, that even though death is on the table, and we experience death. And we know death brings sorrow, misery, pain, all these human elements. But the faith and hope that we understand, brother and sister, that we can believe and teach the resurrection, ain't it? Skip down to verse 20. What does it say? But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. That's right. He came here, died, and he was uh, raised up, brothers and sisters, and went and been accepted to the Father. Go ahead. Look at verse 22. What does it say? 21. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. That's right. That's why we looked at the interruption, brothers and sisters, with the death, because we said, for since by man came death, we knew that came by Adam, that sin came in. When sin came in, death came on the table. And it said, by man came also, what? The resurrection of the dead. Because we know Jesus had to be lowered down from his fully godly powers. And the body had to be prepared for him to what? To die on the cross, didn't it? Verse 22. For as, for as in Adam all die. Go ahead. Even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Ain't that something? For as in Adam all died, because now, since death is on the table, then we read in Hebrews 9, 27, appointed to man to die once, but through what? But they say, but with Christ, so even Christ shall all be what? Made alive. Made alive. I want you to put a nail in the, on the wall on that, because... It's, we all going to be made alive, brothers and sisters. All who die, you're going to be made alive. All of us. But we're going to put that nail on the wall. We're going to cover that a little later. Remember that. Put that nail. We all going to be made alive because we were made alive by Christ's resurrection. Because he, he was the first fruit. He showed us, brothers and sisters, about the resurrection. Now let's go look at you were 23. Yeah, 23. I'm sorry. Go ahead. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, after the day that are Christ at his coming. That's right. Now, now we got to understand, now we're looking at this resurrection because we know everyone who died, brothers and sisters, is in the ground, ain't it? Now, he say, but every man in his own order, everything got to be in order. Christ the first fruits. Afterward, they 
that are Christ at his coming. Brothers and sisters, ain't nothing else going to happen or be raised until what? The coming of the Lord. Amen. Nothing. Everybody's going to be in the ground, brothers and sisters. Now, let's look at, that was 23, right? That's right. Now, let's look at something here. The Lord going to show us a little example here. Because the Lord always shows the example. Let's go to Matthew 27. Because like I said, y'all, put a nail in there about when they say, uh, for as in Adam all die, because there's a point to man to die. But he said, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Remember that. Put a nail in the wall there. Let's go to Matthew 27. Matthew 27. Matthew 27. And let's look at Jesus here on the cross here. Because remember he said in every man in our order. The Lord going to show us something here. Because he's the first fruit among all brethren. Matthew 27. Let's look at verse 50. What does it say? Jesus, when he, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. That's right. He yielded up the ghost, brother. So most people look at that. Well, then the soul gone out of it, man. But see, brother and sister, now you know to go right here. And you can put your little note, put Genesis 2 and 7. That's when he breathed in man's nostrils, he became a what? A living mm -hmm. soul. So what did he yield it up? His breath. Because breath, you can be a living soul or you can be a dead soul. So Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost, his breath. Now skip down to verse 52, what does it say? And the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose. So after Jesus' death, brothers and sisters, what happened? And the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which were slept did what? Arose. Go ahead, 53. And came out of the graves after his resurrection, and went into the holy city, and appeared unto many. And it came out of the grave when? After, right? After. After. That's their first fruit, brothers and sisters. That's what he's telling you. When he came out, he showed them that after him going to be many to come. He said came out of the grave after his resurrection. And he went and went into the Holy City and appeared so people can see the resurrection, brothers and sisters, or how it's going to be. Everybody's not going to be in the grave, brothers and sisters. And if we're going to cover some, some going to be alive when the day of the Lord comes. But you seeing now when this begins to take place here. No time sooner, brothers and sisters, he's telling you how this is going to take place, brothers and sisters. But the Lord continue throughout, brothers and sisters, showing us examples. So as we read examples, that's how we begin to have faith in the resurrection. Let's go to John 11. John 11. John 11. Because a lot of people have this brother and sister out of order, not understanding. Everyone that died, brother and sisters, is just like David in the ground. Nothing going to happen, brothers and sisters, to the coming of the Lord. So you're getting yourself some bullish brothers and sisters to be able to rebuke the foolishness that's being taught out there in the secular churches. Some understand the brothers and sisters in ignorance. That's why you there to learn this to show them, hey, this ain't going to take place until this. The soul is the whole body. What's making a live soul, brother and sister, is the breath of life. Let's look at John 11 here. We're going to pick up one here. We're going to look at Lazarus here. Because the Lord, brother and sister, always shows examples of what's going to take place. Go ahead. 
Now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and, and her sister Martha. Skip down to verse 4. When Jesus heard that he said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Brother and sisters, he's showing you the Lord always, even with us, want to show, brother and sisters, his glory. Even when he take us from sickness and heals us, we could be on our deathbed and the Lord could bring us back. But it's for who? It's for the glory of the Father. That's what he's saying. When Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not until what? Death. Death but for what? The glory of God. He's going to show them something here. Uh, skip down to verse 11. Go ahead. These things said he, and after that he said unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth. What he said? He don't say dead. What he say? Sleepeth. Sleepeth. Go ahead. But I go that I may awake him out of sleep. See what I'm saying, brother? He said, but I go that I may what? Awake him out of sleep. That's all death is, brother and sister. When you look at that, that it's an interruption in the creation at the beginning. That's all they doing is sleeping. Because when you go to a funeral or you go see someone, what it look like they doing? Sleeping. Sleeping. That's all it is, brother and sister. Go ahead. 12. Then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. Go ahead. How be it, Jesus spake, unto, spake of his death. But they, that they thought that he had spoken of taking up rest and sleep. See, they were kind of getting mixed up, one. But look at what Jesus said here, verse 14, what did he say? Then said Jesus unto them plainly, He Lazarus, said to them what? Plainly, plainly what? Lazarus is dead. Laz Lazarus is what? Dead. Now, skip down to verse 17. Then when Jesus came, he found that he had lain the grave for four days already. So how long was he there? Four days. Four days. Then when Jesus came, he found that he had laid in the grave four days already. Now skip down to verse 23. Jesus said unto her, thy brother shall rise again. That's right. He was talking to Martha then. He was telling Martha. He said, Jesus said unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Because, brother, so when you look at him, when Jesus was here then, walk, he was teaching the resurrection, wasn't he? Yeah. So how was it beginning to get twisted of, hey, you dying and going to heaven? See, that's where the secular world come in and start twisting it. They weren't talking about dying and going to heaven. Here was it. No. They was talking about the resurrection because she going to get ready to say something. Go ahead. Look at verse 24 let you know the resurrection was being taught is about faith and believing it. Go ahead, verse 24, what does it say? Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. So the resurrection was being taught, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Martha said unto him, I know. That's faith, ain't it? I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection. When? At the last day. Ain't nothing going to begin, brothers and sisters, to the day of the Lord, but the Lord going to show them an example because then we read earlier that his death, that it's going to be for the glory. He's going to show them something here. Go ahead, verse 25. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, shall yet, shall yet shall he live. That's right. Now look at, uh, skip down to 43 and 44. 43, what it say? And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Right there, it said, when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, do what? Come forth. Come forth. He didn't tell Lazarus to come down, did he? So we know Lazarus wasn't in no third heaven, was it? It's simple, brother. So there's just certain little words we had to read. And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus. Come forth. Go ahead, 44. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes. Go ahead. And his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus said unto them, Loose him and let him go. That's right. Loosen him and let him go. 45. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary 
and had seen the things which Jesus did, believed on him. Go ahead. But some of them went their ways to the Pharisees and told them what things Jesus had done. That's right. You know, someone always ain't going to believe, ain't it? Go ahead. Wait, wait, 44? 47. 47. Go ahead. Then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees a council and said, What do we? For this man does many miracles. See, that they went to the, to the chief priests and the Pharisees. They wanted to know what was going on here because they knew this man was dead, wasn't he? He was dead in the grave. What? Four days. Go ahead. 48. If we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him. You see that? Because, see, that's how it is now, brother. So everybody with the religious world, they want you to believe on them. They don't want to believe in the truth. Listen to what this finna say here. 48. Go ahead. Start at the beginning. 48. If we let him, him thus alone, all men will believe on him. Go ahead. And the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. See, brother and sister, that's what's going on now. People don't want to hear the truth because if, if they begin to leave these secular world churches and begin to come into the truth, what's going to happen? They're going to start coming looking for you, ain't it? Because you're taking from them. And what you're taking, brother and sister, money. That's what they looking at. All this stuff lining up, brother and sister, he, they telling you back here then. Say they went to the, they then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees in council and say, what do we for this man do what? Men of miracles. Verse 49, what it say? And one of them named Caiaphas, being the high priest that same year, Go ahead. said unto them, ye know nothing at all. Go ahead. Nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the nation, for the people, and that the whole nation perish not. Perish not. So they, they started plotting against them, didn't they? But with that plot, they didn't know they were doing the will of God anyway, but in their mind. They said they had a uh, plot against them. Go ahead. 51. And this spake he, and this spake he not of himself, but, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation. For the nation, because they still wanted their what? Positions. Ain't nothing new under the sun when the Lord said that, don't it? You see this now, brothers and sisters, in the book, that they will position themselves for uh, uh, vanity, for to be in charge. They wanted the people to listen to them and not the truth. The same thing that's going on now, brothers and sisters. That's why, brother, so that every time people get, they get an opportunity to try to discredit the truth. But that's why so many people following the tradition of men and the truth is being drowned out. Now, so the Lord, let me see, we got to go to 53. 53. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Then from that day forth, they took counsel together for to put him to death. That's right. See, they counsel together to do that, but they knowing they counsel brothers and sisters, they was doing the work of the Lord because Jesus had to die for our sins anyway, then. He did. Now, let's look at Hebrews. Let's skip down because let's go to Hebrews 11. 